There were large wooden boxes, the kind that hold raisins and figs and round boxes with paper on, smooth on the top and folded in pleats round the edge and the children knew what was inside without looking. Everyone knows what candied fruit looks like on the outside of the box. Well, there were square boxes too, the kind that have crackers in, with a cracker going off on the lid, very different in size and brightness from what it does really for, as no doubt you know, a cracker very often comes into quite calmly without any pop at all. And then you only have the motto and the sweet, which is never nice. Well, as it's Christmas, let's have a carol. <laughs> I have been looking on this evening at a merry company of children assembled round that pretty German toy. German toy. A Christmas tree. The tree was planted in the middle of a great round table and towered high above their heads. It was brilliantly lighted by a multitude of little tapers and everywhere sparkled and glittered with bright objects. There were rosy cheeked dolls hiding behind the green leaves and there were real watches with movable hands at least and an endless capacity of being wound up dangling from innumerable twigs. There were French polished tables, chairs, bedsteads, wardrobes, eight-day clocks and various other articles, domestic furniture, wonderfully made in tin at Wolverhampton, perched among the boughs as if in preparation for some fairy housekeeping. There were jolly, broad-faced little men, much more agreeable in appearance than many real men, and no wonder, for their heads took off and showed them to be full of sugar plums. There were fiddles and drums. There were tambourines, books, work boxes, paint boxes, sweetmeat boxes, peep show boxes, and all kinds of boxes. There were trinkets for the elder girls, far brighter than any grown-up gold and jewels. There were baskets and pin cushions in all devices. There were guns, swords, and banners. There were witches standing in enchanted rings of pasteboard to tell fortunes. There were tito tums, humming tops, needle cases, pen wipers, smelling bottles, conversation cards, bouquet holders, real fruit made artificially dazzling with gold leaf, imitation apples, pears and walnuts crammed with surprises. In short, as a pretty child before me delightedly whispered to another pretty child, her bosom friend, there was everything and more. Now, all in line, hold the lantern up a bit, Tommy. Clear your throats first. No coughing after I say one, two, three. Where's Bill? Here, come on. Do. We're all awaiting. What's up? inquired the rat, pausing in his labours. 
Oh, I, I think it must be the field mice, replied the mole with a touch of pride in his manner, that they go round carol singing regularly at this time of year. They're quite an institution in these parts, and they never pass me over. They come to mole end last of all, and I used to give them hot drinks and supper too sometimes when I could afford it. Who oh, will be like old times to hear them again? Well, let's have a look at them, cried the rat, jumping up and running to the door. It was a pretty sight and a seasonable one that met their eyes when they flung the door open. In the forecourt, lit by the dim rays of a horn lantern, some eight or ten little field mice stood in a semicircle, red worsted comforters round their throats, their forepaws thrust deep in their pockets, their feet jiggling for warmth. With bright beady eyes they glanced shyly at each other, sniggering a little, sniffing and applying coat sleeves a good deal. As the door opened, one of the elder ones that carried the lantern was just saying, Now then, one, two, three. And when at last a stout servant staggers in with a gigantic pudding with a sprig of holly on the top, there was such a laughing and shouting and clapping of little chubby hands and kicking up of fat dumpy legs as can only be equalled by the applause with which the astonishing feat of pouring lighted brandy into mince pies is received by the youngest visitors. Then the dessert and the wine and the fun such beautiful speeches and such songs from Aunt Margaret's husband, who turns out to be such a nice man and so attentive to Grandmama. Even Grandpapa not only sings his annual song with unprecedented vigour, but on being honoured with a, a unanimous encore, according to annual custom, actually comes out with a new one which nobody but Grandmama ever heard before, and a young scapegrace of a cousin who has been in some disgrace with the old people for certain heinous sins of omission and commission, neglecting to call them, persisting in drinking Burton ale, astonishes everybody into convulsions of laughter by volunteering the most extraordinary comic songs that ever were heard. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Glad tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you all.